Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. When you come up through here with a combine, none of this is standing. Like it's all looking like bowling pins, you know. <laughs> They're flying everywhere. Now, I think it's funny, they don't think it's funny. You know, when the people are setting them up, they don't think it's funny at all. You know, the line's just a little tight on the line, you know, rubbing's racing. I enjoy harvesting wheat. It's one of my favorites. I like corn, but don't really care to harvest beans because the table's on the ground, you're fighting ant beds or what have you. But the wheat is it's good because it's the table's up, it's level, just cut the tops out of it, so it's a good day. Uh, most of the time we'll run, I don't know, four mile an hour or something. You know? There's absolutely nothing special about this wheat. <laughs> it is just wheat. And last but not least, Corn knee high by July. Better get the plant, boys. I make my living off the land. We're definitely gonna get rowdy this year. With aching back and callous pain. I'd like to say that this season's gonna be better. Old men said you read what you sow. If you're gonna do something, be the best you can be at it. Out here in these fields of gold. It's hard out here. Always bringing heat. We in Alabama. I'm an early riser, no nighter. They call me Clatter Boy, yeah. I'm a fighter. Ain't gonna stop till they put me in my grave. We're coming back a little harder this year. I'm a This is a 182 acre farm, and I think Dad, when he first come on, that they was working somewhere around 120 acres on it. The first time I met Darlin' Michael, she said, oh, we need to talk to you about some tile, and look what we're doing. ADS was founded in Ag, 1966 was the inception date, and what made it come to fruition was Ag Pipe. A lot of people hear the word tile, and they don't really know what you mean. They think it's bathroom tile or kitchen tile. A yield monitor is the best marketing tool for tile because you go from red to green the numbers don't lie. I mean, in the South, we're used to putting water in on the top. We're used to talking about irrigation. We're used to talking about how to, how to water and how deep we can push water, things of that nature. We've never really learned how water moves under the ground and how we need to clear water from our subsoil. From a tile perspective, the focus has always been so much on the water. We bring up aeration, but we don't focus on the aeration, whereas I think you're actually gonna get even more from the from the aeration part in the soil versus just the water removal. There's so much more to water management than just getting rid of water. What we're trying to do is drain damaging excess water. Yeah. There's so many more benefits to it. It just improves the overall soil health top it's to bottom. Today we're out here at Huntsville, Alabama, uh, installing some drain tile. We're actually using ADS pipe out here today. Uh, what we're doing right now is actually pattern tiling. Uh, so which is where basically you're tiling an area in a pattern and not just spot tiling, which is doing a line or two here or there. Doing this, you can increase your yield by 18 to 30 percent. You know, every farmer's out to make more money than he can. It's honestly, it's better for the, the nutrients of the crops and takes care of their land. When they come in here and lay the main, well, I went in the pipe and stuck my head in the pipe and videoed inside the pipe and I was amazed. It was a flume of water that was about that big. That was just gushing out and I'm like, this, this is, this is going to be fun. This is going to get serious. So you can, all of a sudden, you can, you can change the dynamic of a field. We're trying something here that hasn't been tried as much in the south, this pattern tile. And ADS and Terrence, and we've just gone partnership together here and just see if we can get some value out of it. Let's see what, see what it brings to the table. Let's see what we're thinking about. Yeah, we're going to drain water off of it. Yeah, it's going to move water. But two or three years from now, let's say, hey, this is what it's doing. This is what it's not doing you know, and, and, and go from there to see if we can learn some of this stuff. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. 
doing a lot of different trials, and one of them is Concept Agritech. We're doing a in starter trial. The thing I'm the most excited to try is a bunch of bugs. It's a biological. We're excited to see how they work out. Hello guys, today's uh, July 6th, here with Corn Warriors, doing a little checkup on what's going on on the cob farm. Corn's at that V10, V11 stage. You know, I see a little bit of gray leaf in northern, but um, you know, didn't know much about the hyper there. Should have done some things a little bit different with it early in its life, but you know, it's part of learning. So through the rumor mill, uh, we heard that Chad uh, is tiling for the first time, I guess. I guess it's his first time, but you know, we've been, we've had our own tile plow quite a few years now. Two to three years, it pays for itself, you know, and that's putting them on 25 foot centers. It don't, it's not just getting rid of the water, but it, it gets oxygen back into soil so much quicker. And you know, it keeps that microbial activity going. and can grow corn and water, you know. I mean, I, I mean, at least we can't, so, you know, we love Tom. Today, July 6th, um, we're spraying Headline Amp. You know, we've been using Headline Amp since it's come out. We think it's a fantastic fungicide. Not only the, the disease package that it brings with you to help it on the disease, kill the disease, but we, we really like the curative that it has. Um, you know, hopefully here in two to three weeks, we come back in with another BSF product, uh, Veltima. Uh, that's kind of our go-to fungicides to headline amp first and then come back with uh, Veltima. I think we got all of our ducks in a row for for doing about what all we can for this corn crop. Harvest, you know, it kind of looks like uh, we are. Oh, uh, we're probably we did plant a little bit earlier, but we had such a cool stretch there, so we're we're probably still looking at um, starting middle of September. Probably we probably get some corn down there, 27, 28 percent. I think that's about enough talking about this. Uh, we're gonna go back to spraying fungicides. See you guys later. We just had an irrigation tire come off a rim on one of our center pivots. And usually it's a pain in the ass, but this is a newer pivot, so it should go pretty fast. We'll see. It's not too far out there. We caught it before the season, so it's not like we have to go way out in the field, but. I've got a swarm right here. It could always be worse. Well, as you can see, these recap tires, it just it came off the bead, so. We're just gonna put a new tire on is all. Luckily, we haven't ran the pivot yet this year, so at least it's close. Better than walking a mile and a half. But this is nice corn. Pleasantly surprised. Time. If Brad Kozlowski's watching, we're for hire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if he if he has pivots. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're done here, so I guess we'll go to the big field and check that corn, and then we'll go 
We'll go eat some Chick-fil-A. I don't know, I just, put the, I just put some other herbicide in my little hand sprayer here so we can clean up some weeds around some irrigation wells and stuff. How do you like this towel? <laughs> I was about to say, is Ryan wearing a towel? What's left? All you can see, we had some uh, some squatters. <laughs> so this property's pretty well known for trespassing. <laughs> well, there's a gray leaf spot. We'll have to spray in the next two weeks. Yeah, gray leaf spot has that boxy, you know, boxy rectangular appearance to it. If it looked more like a cigar, it'd be northern leaf blight. Want we'll to spray sooner than we'd like, but I guess that's why you got Valtima, right? <laughs> For that extra window. Longer availability of the fungicide. Yeah, so we're here. We're spraying our, uh, this would be our farm stasics. This is probably one of our wetter uh, pieces of ground. And so we sprayed it once, and then the beans stalled out, and the grass came back, and then the rain came. Needless to say, the grass is here again, and it's here big time. And uh, so we're trying to kill it off. Are we knowing we're probably going to ding the beans some, but the beans will still average 35, 40. I have no, no doubts in that. I think our corn looks good. We have some really nice looking corn, a couple thousand acres of it, but got a long ways to go yet. I mean, we're only in the, we're not even to the third quarter. I would say we're, we're almost a half time. I would guess this weekend we're half time, you know, a day, a couple days for those tassels to all come out. And then, you know, next week we're gonna start right into the third quarter pollination. So, and then uh, we'll go to grain fill. We'll be, hopefully we can uh, finish this game off, right? Uh, we've been using BASF. We've really fell in love with the Veltima. We recommend BASF. It lasts longer and works harder to make sure that they are covered from head to toe. Today we're installing some ADS pipe. This spot here we've never worked before. Let's put some pipe in the ground and let's get a crop off of it. Maximize every input, maximize every acre. Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Hey, it's Dan Lipkus with Corn Warriors. David's behind me, he's just taken off. We've just loaded the sprayer. We're trying something new from Concept Agritech. It's BioAid. Uh, we're putting it on at VT, probably rather put it on at R1, but we've got a uh, rootworm beetle hatch out here we need to be hitting, so we're putting this on at the same time uh, as uh, an insecticide, but pretty excited to see how this works. It could be the wave of the future, uh, but uh, you know, time will tell. Uh, pretty happy with the BASF products this year. You know, the fungicide, we're laying out some Veltima in trials. Uh, we're also laying out some Revitec and some beans. They've got a solid company and a solid program. So, I've got some little friends, you might say, in my field. They're really enemies. We're, uh, we're gonna kill them. Uh, we've got pretty good hatch of rootworm beetle out in a lot of the fields. Seem like they're coming in faster this year. Rootworm beetle hatch has a lot to do with weather. Our GDUs are a little ahead of normal. They'll come up onto your silks. These little silks are very fragile. Now the problem is, is with a, what a rootworm beetle do, they love to eat these tender little silks. That's good eating, that's salad. Or heck, it might be steak to them. So if they cut that off while it's still in this stage, you're done. That kernel will not pollinate. When, we, when the pond was full several days ago after we had rain, 
I blocked off the tube and we've been stockpiling the water behind it. We're gonna turn that loose now and let it into the pond, refill the pond, so I've got plenty of irrigation water. It, it gains me just a few extra days. That's waving. We just, we just pulled one of our preliminary ears out. This isn't contest, but it's kind of next to it. I just pulled one ear. I never even pull any in contest because I always want to save them all. It's 50 long, but whether you hold anything past 40, I don't know, but it is at least 50 long, which that's, that's long. Uh, rows around, that's a lot. I'll tell you right now, it's 18 or 20. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18. That's 18 around. Pretty happy with eight 18s. That'd be a good air corn if we can put good size to the kernels, which we usually have pretty good luck doing that. So we'll see how it progresses. Looking pretty good. about seven o'clock in the morning, sometime around that time frame. We are uh, finally getting started spraying fungicide on corn. We're at the Springfield Airport. So this is where uh, Brian Fisher, uh, he's, he's done all of our aerial work for many, many years and has done a great job. Pretty excited uh, for him to be here today because uh, this year we're actually feeding it for good reasons and we're not trying to save it like we were last year. So that's always a really good feeling. Today we're putting on some Veltima fungicide. It's actually be our third year with it. We've seen great results from it so far. The other stuff other than that is all a bunch of feel good goodies going in to feed the corn and, uh, and hopefully add some test weight. Brian Fisher, I mean, he is my secret weapon. Have somebody that's gonna care just as much as I do about my crops, I mean, I will put Brian up against anybody. It comes down to everything. Yes, we, we, we all farm, but it's attention to detail. So what separates, you know, one farmer from the next, or the yield goal of 300 to 200 to 400? It's attention to detail. Last year, we came with, with the fungicide application with the Veltima. We actually already had this sprayed about two weeks ago. Uh, our plant date was a lot later last year than it was this year. So we was actually spraying this corn around that v, V10 time framing. The reason why we did that is because we were so hot and dry. We was extreme stressed. We didn't have the disease pressure that we did. So we had to come in early to help save that crop, to give it more weeks to stay alive, to hopefully catch a rain. So this year, we actually had the luxury to wait. You know, I'm not saying that we're gonna be a road beater by any means, I'm just saying our end results to get where we want to get, this path has been a heck of a lot easier than the years before. I don't want people watching this thinking, oh man, he's, he's claiming he's gonna have four or 500 bush of corn. If I get 300, I'm gonna be tickled death still. I'm not trying to set the road on fire here. I'm trying to get my end result of making money at a cheaper, easier way. We're well on our way this year of doing that. You know, Mother Nature has definitely helped us. And you know, if we throw out a big, big number in the process, we throw it out, I'll be happy. But that's not what's gonna define me or this farm. It's definitely 
how we got there. Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. Today I'm running Monty's Dry Carbon. We're doing a lot more soil health stuff. The soil biology is the key to everything. The best humic product on the market is Monty's Humic. August 26, um, here on what I think is probably my best corn. Two numbers, aggregate numbers out here. We've had a really good growing season, honestly. Uh, been getting some timely rains, and if anything, those timely rains maybe delayed me a little bit on some of my nutrient application because that's done, a lot of this late stuff's done with fertigating. And you know, when you get two inches of rain, you hate to fertigate that same day, so it may push back some of those applications, but we've been really good until the final days here, the final two weeks of grain fill. We've hit a lot of heat, 90 plus degrees, no wind, um, the humidity is super high, and I'm concerned about that. Hopefully we'll be all right. I guess let's go check it out. So here we are inside the 6659. What I always liked about the 6659, I mean, this hybrid, it don't dent a lot. Hybrid typically is pretty consistent on um, the placement of the year. Decent kernel depth. You can say, we're, you know, we're half milk line. I think the kernels could be bigger. You know, I know we're not quite to the end. I mean, don't get me wrong, them are nice kernels. Can't complain about that, but uh, you always want more. Never satisfied with with what you got, you always want more. Just field hit it from day one. We did a wide drop pass at V6, and then we um, came back at V10, V12 with a Haggy and 360 wide drops on that. And then from there on, it's just been a lot of fertigating. But as far as fungicide, and fungicide this year is key. I've got some of the call it dirtiest crops. I mean, uh, I've got a lot of disease and a lot of my corn. And a lot of it's where I came with a generic early. They just didn't cut it. This field here was applied at V12 with a Veltima. That's been all the difference in the world. I mean, you can see this leaf here. I mean, it's clean. This is the, the cleanest field I got. And, and that's where we get yield. I got to thank Veltima for that. Guys, we need a good coverage early. Get the good one out early for good coverage and then come back with something cheaper, you know. I disagreed with that because we get so much disease pressure late and I wanted that good fungicide to carry me late. Tar spot comes in a good 30 days before you can see it on the leaf. Once you see it, it's there. I mean, there's not a lot of protection after that. So you get a good coverage early when those spores are flying around, that, that's, that's key. This tar spot deal is new to us. I've got a field up in the next county north. It's real bad. It's cut its yield quite a bit, I'm sure. But we did try spraying. I sprayed Bell Team on it real late, just to learn from, you know, because it's something that we'll probably be dealing with every year now. Heck, you gotta learn what you can learn. Next week on Corn Wars. Uh, we have a special guest joining us today. This field's probably going to yield the best it ever has. Hey! Smooth operator! Smooth! <laughs> <laughs>